So after using the new Aura Ring 3 for just over a week now, here are my thoughts and findings. Hey guys, Alex here from alexfocus.com. So it's been just over a week since I got the new Aura Ring 3 uh, and I've been using it every day and night and uh, testing it in the field and in the gym and, and all of those cool places and uh, I've been checking my data on the app here. So what I wanted to do, I have done a first impressions unboxing video, uh, but I wanted to just do a quick update. Um, I, I do want to do a full review, like take a really deep dive into this ring, but given the time of the year and the fact that we're about to have a baby any day now, I figured, you know what, that full review may be a few weeks away, um, which is probably what I need anyway, I need that time to really test it. So I wanted to do this real quick sort of first look review uh, and share some of my thoughts and um, some interesting findings that I've had with this ring and the conclusion that I, I think I'm, I'm forming in my head uh, around this ring and whether you should buy it or not. So that may surprise a lot of people. Uh, so be sure to hang around and, and hear that uh, interesting insight at the end of this video. So first things first, if you saw my unboxing first impressions video, uh, you would have noticed that there was quite a big discovery that I had uh, in, during that process. I learned that yes, this ring does have heart rate monitoring during the day, which is great, which is one of the few uh, new features that the Aura Ring 3 has over the second, uh, second gen ring. However, I discovered that the heart rate is only tracked uh, every five minutes during the day and only when you're still or resting. And I did a rough demonstration showing that like if your hand's moving around, you can't get a reading. However, if you're nice and still, then you get a reading, right? And, and I was quite surprised by that because I really thought that, hey, it was going to be tracking, you know, your heart rate every 30 seconds or minute throughout the day, right? I knew with the second generation ring, the reason why it didn't have heart rate tracking during the day or real-time heart rate tracking was because the technology limitations uh, meant that your ring, your finger had to be nice and steady and thus that's why they only did it at sleep, uh, when you were sleeping. Uh, so when I, you know, fast forward a couple of years with the new generation ring, and it's like, yes, now there's um, real-time heart rate tracking. It's like, ah, oh, finally, they'll fix that technology uh, limitation and, and brought in this really neat feature, which a lot of people expected years ago, right? So to find that, no, that uh, it doesn't really work that way. You only get the heart rate monitoring when you're resting uh, or relaxing. Um, it was a bit of a bummer. Yeah, I was quite disappointed by that. So anyway, that was uh, before I tested it. Now I have been testing it. I can show you what we're seeing on the screen and I can also um, share some insights. So pretty much the key thing is if you do anything intensive, like go to the gym or I don't know, chop firewood like I do a lot of here, um, you're not gonna get a reading, right? The thing is though, that's typically when you wanna see, well not always, but that's that's when I'd like to see what my heart rate was doing, especially if it's training, you know, like if you're if you're doing some aerobic training or sprint training, you know, it'd be great seeing those peaks and troughs with your heart rate, right? And how fast, you know, it's coming down. But you miss out on all of that, unless you take a moment every few minutes to just relax and, and let the ring do its thing. So yeah, a bit of a bummer. When you look at it on a screen, you just see that, uh, the, the data just stops. Here, I'll show you. Okay, so I've just opened the app. Uh, I've scrolled back a week to last Wednesday. At, uh, we're on the home screen here. We see readiness score, your sleep score, activity goal. We'll look at all these in a bit more de detail soon. Then we go down to heart rate. Now, you see a snapshot or an overview, I guess, uh, of the heart rate for that day. I can click on that little arrow and see a bigger screen. Now, um, as you can see in the morning, I was, well, from midnight to six, seven o'clock-ish, I was sleeping. Heart rate was, you know, low 50s. Uh, obviously, I get up around seven o'clock and the heart rate comes up and it tells you the range there. Uh, so it's giving you the range, which is the, the blue bars and then the, the white is obviously the, the rolling average or the trend, I guess. Um, early afternoon, I go into town, two o'clock, you can see there that the range goes from 57 up to 103. So that's when I got to the gym and then I started training. Uh, we see a peak at 120, but then we see no data, all right? Um, and this is, I was just moving around uh, or you know, doing too much training, not doing too much training, doing too much, or moving too much, simple as that, and um, I couldn't get any data coming in. And then you see those bars aren't as um, consistent as well because you're not getting that many readings. So you look at that and you can see, all right, well, there, there was a workout there, but of course, it's not giving you all the data that you would like to see. Um, I guess though what this means is the Aura Ring 3, yes, it has a bit of heart rate monitoring, great, but it's not 
it's not a fitness tracker, all right? It's more of a health, stress, sleep tracker um, because you wouldn't be using this to track heart rate zones if you're training or, or you know, recovery times or anything like that. So this is what you see. I mean, hey, I do like it. It's better than, than not having this data, sure, but there are limitations. Of course, then you see um, movements throughout the day. I think on this day in the evening, because it's summertime here, I'm actually doing a lot of gardening after my son goes to bed and uh, we've had dinner and that. So that's probably why uh, the heart rate comes down, you know, 60 to 80 beats and then 7.30, 8.30, it spikes up again. It's probably when I was out doing some stuff uh, in the garden and then of course it drops off. Now underneath that you see restorative time, sleeping and daytime. So you can it detects when you're sleeping and it shows you a more detailed breakdown of when you were sleeping. So I was up quite late that night, you know, midnight through to 7 a.m. Um, so that's cool, being able to break that down. Uh, daytime, same thing. You're just seeing a, a close up of your uh, daytime heart rate, which is, um, which is cool. And then restorative time, but I didn't have any of that during the day. So, okay, now that we've seen that, let's look at another day uh, and we'll look at Friday when I actually had a nap. The nap I had was uh, was from two o'clock to three o'clock. Now you can see on this screen, I actually took a screenshot of the, the data um, when I had that nap. We'll come back to this soon. So from two to three. Interestingly enough, that is not showing in the restorative, well, it shows a little blip. Uh, so the restorative time, yeah, it's a little bit interesting, right? It's those green bars. Uh, I thought it would just show up just when I had the nap, but it's also showing up late at night and early morning, which is when I was sleeping. So there's obviously a bit of a issue there, big of a bit of a bug because that shouldn't have shown up like that. You should really only be seeing that nap around two o'clock. But anyway, um, it is what it is. Uh, now, when we go have a look at the actual data for the nap, what was interesting is I took this screenshot, right? It picked up that I had a nap. Now, my previous Gen 2 ring didn't do this and it used to bother me because I used to have quite a lot of naps when I was personal training. You know, you'd get up early, train clients, come home, have a nap. And it never really impacted my um, readiness and sleep score because I'd say get five hours sleep at night and then, you know, a two hour nap during the day or six hours and two hours type thing. So I got a lot more sleep than the ring was, was aware of. Uh, but now I see here with this nap, after the nap, I saw this that it had a plus five uh, impact on my sleep score and a plus three on my readiness score. I was like, oh, that's cool. Like it's actually accounting for it now. Uh, and of course you can see your heart rate and um, HIV data for when you're, when you're sleeping. So this is actually what I saw when I, when I opened my app after the nap. It said, here's how it affected your scores. It went from 70 to 75, 79 to 82, which, which is really cool, right? I do like the heart rate feature, I guess. I just don't like the fact that it's still not recording your heart rate uh, when you're still, which, which is, yeah, it's just a, it's just a bummer because it would be really cool seeing, seeing, um, what was going on. So here's a few more examples, right? So Saturday, uh, midday, what was I doing then? Uh, it may have been gardening. It may have actually been firewood. Yeah, I think we may have done a few hours of firewood then. So, uh, you see in the middle there, you have no data for a while. Um, the, there were a couple of readings. So the aura ring is putting those dotted lines there showing, you know, what it expects, uh, I guess what it, it's guessing has happened. You know, you, so you see these breaks. It's not end of the world, but you can see why you wouldn't buy the Aura Ring 3 as a fitness wearable, as a fitness tracker, like purely to test your heart rate during the day because, yeah, you're just not going to get it. Now, today I actually charged my ring, so um, you can see a big jump up there, and then it was on the charger for a, a big block, which is why there's no data there. So that's the new heart rate feature. Um, good, yes, could be better, could be a lot better. Now, the other thing I need to mention about the heart rate tracking is the fact that this has green LEDs in it that I don't understand how they work, but a lot of wearables, sleep trackers and that have the green LEDs in it, right? So O-Ring never used to have that. Um, the new ones, it does. Now, I'm not used to wearing fitness trackers as such, like Apple Watches or Garmin or anything like that. Um, and I've gone into that, into my reasons in other videos. So. I was quite surprised when the first night uh, I had this on and I was lying in bed reading my book and all of a sudden I see the whole, th my finger glowing green. I was like, well, what's going on? And then I realized that's right. There's, there's green LEDs in this and it kind of like, kind of, I don't know, kind of annoyed me in a way uh, because I, you know, I'm big on blue light 
optimizing light cycles and all that. I've written about it in blogs, I'll put links to it below. Um, I do what I can to minimize artificial light at nighttime, especially the blue and the green lights. And that's because there's tons of research showing that blue light exposure, not only to the eye, but also the skin, uh, can disrupt melatonin production, increase cortisol, impact sleep, health, circadian rhythm, all those things, right? But it's not just the blue light, it's also green. And I've done studies showing that if you have a LED taped to the back of your, your leg, um, with a control group, so they didn't know if it was on or not, uh, that a little bit of light exposure on the skin can impact your melatonin and sleep and health and immune function and all that. So it's a it's part of the reason why I've never gone into the wearables. I didn't want devices that were um, constantly pulsing, you know, EMF, your Bluetooth, Wi-Fi and all that. And I also didn't want a device that was shining green light on my body, um, especially at nighttime. And so recently I did have the Garmin uh, Tactics elite uh, watch I, I bought it and yeah as soon as i put it on the green starts flickering and i just i was like i can't do this i just took it off that night boxed it up sent it back um so when this happened with aura ring i was kind of like damn i didn't think about this and i was so tempted just to take it off and be like no nah, i'm done but i thought you know what i'll stick with it because i have been a big aura ring fan for for a long time and i have told you guys i would do a review um so yeah it, it does Hey, I'm going to come back to this thought and, and share my um, my conclusion, I guess. Well, not conclusion. I'll share what, how I'm feeling about this, but we'll keep looking at the heart rate for the time being. But I do want to say, this is someone who hasn't used these devices before. So just remember that, okay? But I really struggle with the, with the bright green light at nighttime. Okay, like I'm sitting there in a pitch black room, um, about to go to sleep, and I'm, I'm not, you know, I've got my hand next to my head or something, and then my finger lights up, and it's like, what the hell? Um, or I'm up in the night, and my little boy's, you know, crying, so I've gone to comfort him, and he's just drifting back to sleep, and then he's like, Dad, why, what's that green light? And it's like, oh my God, this is annoying. This is very frustrating. And then plus it's eating at me that, hey, this could be impacting my sleep and melatonin. Now, again, I haven't used those devices before, and for those of you that have, you might be like, hey, dude, that's just that's just how it is wearing these devices. Just get used to it, okay? So I'm not used to it, I guess. But there is also that melatonin issue. I wonder, and maybe you guys can help me, if there are any wearables that uh, track heart rate and heart rate variability and all that without using the green LEDs, like can it be done using red? I know the previous Aura Ring 2 had near infrared um, or infrared sensors in it. And I think they're still in this ring as well. Um, but Obviously, they've used the green as well. So, hey, that's my big spiel on, on the heart rate testing. Uh, if you're using one of these rings, I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are. And um, yeah, sorry I went so deep there with the green light and stuff, but it's, it's a big thing for me. Next up, a few things about the ring itself. Now, um, it's very similar form factor, if not identical to the second generation ring. I actually got the, the cheaper version this year. I didn't get the stealth matte black one. I got the shinier one. I, I kind of like the shinier one and I can't really justify spending the extra hundred dollars for the stealth one especially because the stealth one scratched up so easily i've put out a video on that before um, showing how how badly damaged it was i've used this for like i said a week and it's been to the gym and all over the farm and i can say now that it held up exceptionally well at the gym like i smashed it well i, I did some big deadlifts and chin-ups and all that and there was nothing i'm just looking at it now there's one tiny little chip right on the side but other than that not too bad, given for given how I live and, and how I, I really try and I try and break these rings, I guess, uh, to show you guys. But that's good on that front. Uh, it works with the same generation two charger and and vice versa. I can use my Aura Ring two on the new charger. The the new charger does have uh, the original one just used to have a white light. This has a green and a blue light uh, based on what it's doing. If it's syncing or updating, different lights go, which is which is neat. I have also noticed that I get a neat little reminder. Um, on the app now if the battery's getting low. I don't know if that used to happen with the other one. I never noticed it. Maybe I hadn't updated the app, but that is kind of cool. As for battery life, I haven't gone too hard with the quantification yet. I think it was five days from 95% uh, charge down to about 27%. So I think you're meant to get about a week. I, I wouldn't push it to a week because you may lose one or two days data at the end, which is always a bummer. You get up in the morning and you don't have your sleep data. So about five days, I think, between charges is is the norm and I haven't quantified yet how long it takes to recharge it either. I will do that uh, and cover it all in my full review. So be sure to subscribe for that. So one thing I don't like with the O-ring and I think it's more pronounced now with the third generation O-ring is the unconfirmed activity question I get. Like, uh, I'll show you, let me, let me go onto the app and you'll see here uh, at the top of the screen, it's saying you have an unconfirmed activity from yesterday. Some days I'm going into the app 
and it's saying you have like three unconfirmed activities from yesterday. I guess by activity, it's, it's anything, right? Like I live on a farm, I'm always out on the farm, I'm in the garden, I'm chopping wood. So I guess maybe Aura's thinking those are activities, but I don't log those things. I just, you know, I, I record, okay, I went on a big bike ride or I went to the gym, but that's about it. But every day I go in, there's like, hey, you have unconfirmed activities. And I'm just like, ah, drives me sort of nuts. I'm like, just figure out what I'm doing. You know, you've got enough sensors in there now, you must be able to figure out that, hey, Alex had his heart rate up, he must have done something. And then I wonder, like, I, I'm not expecting it to know that I'm rowing or anything like that, but like, does it matter if I specify that, hey, I did a workout or like, does that then affect my readiness score? Shouldn't it just calculate my readiness score based on my heart rate, heart rate variability, temperature, all those things that they're ordering sensing? Like, does it actually matter if I log it or not? Is it just for my sake or not? I'm not too sure. But I start wondering, oh, maybe the data is not as accurate because I haven't logged it, right? So when you look in the app here, you open it up, you see on your home screen, you have an unconfirmed activity. So we're gonna click that button. And look, look at what I see, detect workouts. I'm like, Okay, there was a bit of a spike there uh, for 21 minutes. I mean, that might have just been me working, walking up a hill or it might have been me um, loading up, uh, I don't know, some firewood. I know I keep talking about firewood, but you know, or it might have been me moving some animals, some sheep, and I had to run to the gate because to cut them off or something. But if you look back on some of my other days, I see lots of spikes here, right? It's just how I live. I'm, I'm always out and about doing stuff. Um, Friday, I didn't even go to the gym that day, but you can see there's two big spikes there. Actually, you know what it was on Friday, and this is another bugbear I have with the, with the app, not just the Gen 3, but it was also true for Gen 2, is it, it detects some things as like really high intense workouts. So mowing the lawns is always a high, and it's just me walking around. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's probably what I'd class as medium, but it's not high, right? I don't break a sweat or get the heart rate too elevated. Um, it must just be the vibrations. And there was another example like that where I, I used it for, oh, I can't remember what it was. This was years ago. I used to do it quite a few times and it used to always come up as real high. And I'm like, I don't know what's going on here. But um, so the O-ring's not great from an activity tracker. And I, I don't use it for that reason. I never have. Even when I was big into my training, I would use dedicated fitness tracking devices, heart rate monitors, you know, for my, for my aerobic training zones and all that sort of stuff. I like the Aura Ring for stress, recovery, sleep. It's what I've said in previous reviews, the Gen 1 and Gen 2 reviews, and the new Gen 3, it's looking like it's exactly the same. Sure, it's got the heart rate feature in there, but um, I just don't see the Aura Ring 3 as a fitness sports tracking device. If you're serious about your sports and performance and you're an athlete, you can still benefit from the Aura Ring because you're getting all the great data overnight and stuff, right? The readiness, the uh, temperature changes and stuff, but I wouldn't buy it if you're just looking for a fitness tracker. And that's true with this new third generation ring, despite the heart rate uh, tracking during the day. I'm sort of talking to people here who are familiar with my work or familiar with the second generation ring. So I do apologize for that. I haven't gone deep into like, hey, this is what the ring does and all that sort of stuff. Um, I will be doing a full review that will do that. So we'll, we'll cover those topics later on. But when you go into the app, this is what you see. You see your home screen. Now it's telling me I have an unconfirmed activity. Can't be undone if I delete it. It's telling me I need to update the app. There's been a lot of app, app updates lately. Uh, and then you see your data. So I see my activity goal progress. To be honest, I never even look at that. In fact, I've never read it until now because again, I don't, I don't really care about calories or uh, activity just given how I live and what I do, right? So I've never looked at that. Then you see your um, heart rate for the day, which is interesting. Sometimes I do look at that and see something unusual and think, oh, that's cool. And I, I, I click on that button like we saw below and you can get the breakdown, kind of cool. Um, then you've got your readiness score and then beneath that sleep. Now these are the two numbers that I do look at pretty much every morning. I uh, get up, I sink my ring, have a look at how well I slept um, and then my readiness score. The sleep, you know, it's one of those things like, you know if you sleep well, if you didn't, and that's true. Like I, I know if I wake up and I was like, that was a good sleep, but it is nice seeing the, the numbers on here. Um, actually lately, it's kind of depressing seeing those numbers because, um, you know, with babies and toddlers and hot summer nights and stuff, it's usually a pretty bad, uh, bad number. But anyway, uh, and then the main thing for me is readiness because that shows me how my body's going. Like, am I coming down with something? Uh, am I staying up too late? And it's starting to take a toll. So that's where I focus the most with that ring. That's what I get the most from this ring. The most benefit I get, like that readiness number. It just tells me what's going on. And then I can see trends. Now we're gonna pull up trends here. If I go into the top left and then click on trends, 
this is quite interesting. So you can see here your seven day average for my Haro variability. Um, there's a bit of movement there. Unfortunately, I've only got seven days data. Like it's, it's much better when you can see, you know, weeks or months. Of course, you can go into this and see breakdowns for weekly, monthly and all that. But again, I don't have the data. Now you can add tags and you can see your activities in there. I, some people get into this. I, I've always just been disappointed with the ordering tags function. It's just, it's just, it just doesn't work the way it could do. And I've covered this in my Aura Ring 2 reviews. Like, yeah, it could be done so much better. Um, but anyway, uh, I, I haven't experimented with it much in the new app, so I maybe I shouldn't write it off until I do, and I will cover that in an updated review with time. Uh, so trend, back on the trend screen, we can see the body temperature was slightly down last night. Again, you can click on that and see changes on a daily basis. And of course your trend, so there's not too much data there. Um, it would be cool getting an exact number, like saying, hey, you were 39.2 or you had a fever or something. Like it's always just changes. I I know with this new ring, they've got like something like seven temperature sensors in it or something crazy. I don't know why they need seven, but there's seven in there. And I really was hoping that you'd see a hard number, like this is your temperature. And I think years ago when I asked about this with the Gen 2, they said, oh, they couldn't quite get a baseline and so they just work on change. But I thought to myself, why could they not have a calibration feature where you 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 do a test, you, you press a button, you say, let's calibrate your body temperature. And then you go get a thermometer, you take your reading and then it says, how did you take it? You know, orally, forehead, whatever. And you, you enter your number. I should, I'm in Celsius here, that's why I say 39. Um, you, you enter your number, you know, I was 37.6. And then the ring does its thing for a few minutes, you have to hold still or whatever, and it forms a baseline. And then it says, all right, we're detecting it's here, we now know that that is 36 or whatever it was. And then it can tell you each day, this is your temperature. Like, well, why can that not be done? I'm not too sure. Um, and then maybe you have to redo that every three months and it just gives you a reminder. Uh, that would be better than the changes, though the changes are interesting. Anyone that has used the Nora ring before and has gotten sick, like with a fever in that, and you see those massive spikes, and it does, it does a pretty good job of picking up uh, the start of a fever or the start of an illness like you will see you wake up one morning and it'll be like your temperature's up like 0.5 or, or something and you're like huh what's going on here saying that one day it was up or it was down half a degree um, but it's usually pretty good right and it's quite interesting looking back um, after you've been sick you look back at the data you're like well something was going on there so um yeah that is pretty cool uh, now back in the trend screen again we've got bedtime as you can see my bedtime is quite late at the moment um got a pre-baby to-do list and we're, yeah, I'm running around like getting the, uh, the baby room ready and getting all that fun stuff ready at night. Like it's really the only time I'm getting. So that's kind of cool. You can open that up and you can see pretty consistently I'm staying up way too late. Actually, that's quite sad how consistent it is. I haven't had any early nights since I've been wearing this ring. So it's all cool. I do like the trends. I do like seeing all this data, it's fun. Um, so then you can go into sleep and you can break down all your trends on different things. So let's look at sleep stages uh, and you can see your sleep stages. So even though I'm not getting massive amounts of sleep, um, I'm still getting a good amount of, of, uh, of deep sleep. So you can see all my data from my other rings. I don't know why all my data is not in there. Anyway, uh, something I'll have to look into. Uh, so you can see your, your trends over monthly and weekly and you can do that for anything, right? Time in bed, um, you can see wake up times, deep sleep, uh, all that cool stuff. So you can really geek out on some of this stuff. It is pretty cool. Uh, same for readiness, readiness score, resp uh, respiration rate, um, whatever you want to look at, right? Uh, heart rate, resting heart rate. Um, you know, and obviously seeing this on a week, day to day basis is not that interesting. You break it down over weeks and months. I don't know why I don't have all my data in here. Anyway. Um, you know, you can start seeing, oh, the benefits of doing a new training program or something and how your resting heart rate comes down. So there is cool things in here, temperature, heart rate variability, all that. And then activity, you can do the same thing again, activity score. Um, yeah, don't need to go into too much detail there, but it's it's more just observation stuff. Like you can go in and have a look at it and, um, you know, draw your own conclusions, I guess. So that is the trend screen. Now we're back in the home screen. Uh, what else do I need to show you? Up the top here, there is rest mode. Now, I haven't used this and there's still a few things I need to look into and this is what I will be covering in a future full review once I have explored them in a bit more detail, so be sure to subscribe for that. But rest mode here, it seems a bit unusual. It says you enable this mode when you need a rest, whether you've had an injury or like jet lag or, or something like that. And when you do this, it 
it doesn't calculate your activity goals and scores. Uh, all of that is paused. Your readiness score um, highlights recovery metrics during the following days. And if you go for more information, um, it says, uh, you know, it, it helps you with the recovery and all that. I, I don't really get the point of that. Like, why do I want to pause stuff when I'm in rest mode? It's not like, like, why can't I have both? So I don't, I don't quite understand that. Maybe there's something I'm missing. If, if you're aware of it, uh, what it does and the reason why you have it, like leave a comment below. Otherwise I will play around with that sometime. <laughs> Maybe after baby arrives. Um, no, actually, that's going to be a bad time because I'm not going to get any rest. But anyway, maybe we'll get a night or two away and I'll, I'll try it then. Um, and then obviously at the bottom of the home screen, you have your bedtime tonight, your ideal bedtime. Again, I never really, I don't know, some people really love all this stuff and they need those reminders and that. It's just like, yeah, I should go to bed earlier. Uh, I don't need an app to tell me that. But um, the cool thing is though, like if you've never seen my aura ring reviews, um, you do get a lot of data from this, right? Like if you have a few drinks, uh, or you stay up a bit later than usual, you see it firsthand with your readiness score, right? Like it's clear as night and day. Like it's even surprising how one drink can impact your readiness score. And when I used to do a lot of health coaching and personal training, I'd try to get all my clients to wear these rings because I know a lot of them used to do a lot of drinking and stay up way too late. And I think, oh, it's fine. It's only when I have a big blowout that it, it ruins me. It's like, no, you'll, you'll see what's happening. You know, your body temperature is a bit off or your HIV is off, your readiness is off. So you do see all those good things, which is why I do like wearing or the aura ring. Even if I'm not training for something or geeking out and biohacking, it's just nice having that there in the background just as a subtle little reminder like, hey dude, you're pushing it a bit too hard. Your readiness is just dropping away or look, your average sleep is dropping or ever since you got that new mattress, your um, deep sleep has just dropped and you're not getting anything. Like you do see those trends. Um, and that's why the trend screen is, is something I do like going into and just flicking through every now and then. So what else do we have on the home screen? We, at the bottom right, we have that little plus icon. So I can go at a workout, at a tag or at an unguided session. I don't, I should, but I don't really do much meditation or any meditation, but that's what that's about. Uh, you can go in there and do meditation, get some sound, attract your heart rate and all that. Um, David, one of my uh, contributors, to the site, uh, he did a video, I think it was on the Aura Moments. I've got a review on that on my YouTube channel. You can check that out below. Um, obviously, you can add a workout, go into the workout screen. And there's a lot of, what was that one? Pickle, pickleball. What's pickleball? I've never heard of that before. Um, but you can add all this. But I've never used this, even with my second gen one, because again, I don't care about calories. I've got an article on why, I don't care, why you shouldn't care about calories. Um, I don't really care about the um, activity side. And I'm hoping that the readiness score is looking at what's going on with my body, not what I'm telling the aura ring I've done. You know, I'm hoping it's picking up on, on how well I slept and how what my temperature is like and then determining my score, not saying, Alex, did you train today? Yes. Was it intense? Yes. Oh, we better drop the readiness score. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, that's, that's all of that. And then what was the other thing? Tag. Uh, we're not going to worry about tags either because I think that's a bit silly, but that's just me. Anyway, up the top here, we've got, um, oh, we can share some data, which is kind of cool. I guess if you're a coach, uh, had a coach or you just want to, you had amazing sleep and, or a real bad sleep and you want to share it on Instagram, I guess that's what that's for. I've never used that. Uh, and then the top right, you have your ring. So at the moment, like I have Bluetooth on, my ring's not in airplane mode. It's all syncing. Now, speaking of airplane mode, you can disable the Bluetooth transmitter on this simply by hitting that button and it will turn the transmitter off. So that means you're not getting any data to your phone. The way to re-enable that is to put that on the charger, turn Bluetooth off on, on your phone, that will sync and then your phone is back transmitting. Lately, I've actually been leaving this on uh, just so I can get some of those insights with the heart rate and just see what's happening with the ring. Once I've set it into this ring, I'll probably go back to turning that off and just syncing it once a day to get my sleep score because I don't really check in during the day. You, you're probably watching this and thinking, dude, you're the worst person to review this product, right? Um, but hey, I, I love the first generation ring and I love the second one and I'm, I'm, I'm still, uh, I'll reveal my thoughts with the third one soon. But what I get from this ring is different to like people who geek out on Fitbits and all that sort of jazz. And anyone that knows me and has followed my stuff for a while know that knows that I care about my sleep and minimizing exposure to EMF and artificial light and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, and some people are buying the O-ring for those reasons. So hopefully you find this video interesting. If you want to geek out with ta tags and training and fitness and all the other features that the O-ring has, 
maybe um, the, you know, there's another review out there that's better suited to you. Back into this ring here, we can see the battery level. Uh, we scroll to the side, we can see a bit about the ring, um, how to set up a new one. Yeah, it's kind of like your menu. At the bottom, we have home, we have readiness. Uh, this brings up your readiness data in one screen so you can see the, the data points. I always get confused, like I look at the number, but the number is just your resting heart rate. The bar is actually your, your readiness score. So this is in a way similar to the trends, it's looking at the daily scores, but you can see a lot more data, right? You can see for that particular day, you know, Sunday, my temperature was up a bit, heart rate was 48, heart rate variability, which is really low, 58, don't know what was going on that day, uh, respiration rate. Um, what could be nice if, is if you saw a little plus or minus next to that, like or a green or a red, so you could see like if that was up from the previous day or something. Um, not that you need it, but just a nice little add-on. And then when you go down here, you can see a breakdown of what made this, what contributed to this readiness score. So here, I, on this day yesterday, I got a 71 out of 100, which is good. Um, and then you got, you can click on each thing and see a bit more about it. So I got rest and heart rate 47. Uh, based on Aura's data, that's good. Uh, HRV balance between sympathetic and parasympathetic, optimal, um, you know, I sleep wasn't very good, hence it's red. So yeah, that's all cool. And then you go down and now you see your, your heart rate for uh, your sleep. So you can see it overnight uh, and likewise with heart rate variability. And you can click on all these things and really geek out on all this stuff. This is what I like looking at. You know, I like looking at this data. I find it quite interesting. And uh, especially when there's something that stands out that's a little bit different, like, hey, what happened or why is this happening? So if we look at Friday, we see the readiness was 82. But when we scroll down to details, we see that um, it was originally 79, but then because of that nap, uh, it got bumped up three points. So I like that. I think that's really cool. You know, that, hey, it's like, oh, you had a nap. Your scores get better. Good on you, which is cool. Down here. Down in the middle, we have sleep. So again, it's it's all uh, similar data. I only had six hours sleep last. Oh no, that was yesterday. Seven hours last night. So yeah, you can see you can see breakdowns between types of sleep stages, heart rates, everything like that. Again, you can click on anything in here: sleep efficiency, total sleep, and see more data. Um, you can then tick the eye for information up the top and see more data, uh, more information about that data. So. Yeah, I'm not going to go through all those menus because it's I'll, I'll be here for an hour and I'm already probably too long in this video. But you, if, if there's something you like, hey, what's sleep efficiency? You can click it, you can read about it, you can see what ideal is. I think it mentioned 85%. That's based on weekends. Lately, uh, I've been getting up a lot with our, our little one, so that's why my efficiency isn't that good. Likewise, again, your contributors to your score, REM sleep, deep sleep, latency, timing, all of those things all factor into the score. And, and I do like these scores. I think they're good for sleep and readiness. I do like them. I've talked about them in my Gen 2 ring review. Um, I'm not gonna go into them too much details, but you, you look at what's going into the sleep score. You've got your total amount of sleep, you've got your efficiency, um, wakefulness versus sleeping, um, how deep the sleep score your sleep was, uh, how much REM sleep you got, how much deep sleep you got, uh, how long it took you to fall asleep, and then timing. Did you sleep when it's dark type thing at night time? You know, did you stay up too late? Uh, which is um, all about circadian rhythms, which is a big thing to do with health. Um, so yeah, that, that's, I, I do like the scores. And then again, down there, you can see the actual breakdown of your sleep. So this particular night, um, went to bed just before midnight, around, what was that, one o'clock, uh, I was up with my little one. He woke a few more times. I don't know if all of these were wakings. I think I've, I've been waking about four times a night, but um, so it's not super like, you know, you, sometimes you look and you're like, that's a bit off, but it's typically pretty reliable. Um, you know, like three wakings, four wakings. It's pretty, it's pretty good. It's, it's not, you know, you're not gonna do peer reviewed studies, I guess, using this data. Like this one here, uh, that just seems ridiculous. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Like there's no way I work 10 times. I know I've had some bad sleeps and woke up in the morning like, oh my God, that was crazy. But I don't think that was a true uh, representation of what happened. Then of course you can, um, you can actually tick this arrow and you can see movement throughout the night. Um, underneath the sleep stages as well, which again is quite interesting. So if I scroll through different um, days, so you can see the amount of movement, which is cool. And then as you go down further, you can see your heart rate throughout the night uh, and then your heart rate variability. Tons of data, right? It's cool. Activity screen, 
Uh, yeah, I mean, you're seeing the amount of activity, which is, it's not steps as such, it's, I don't know how they calculate it. Oh, well, we can see down here, I guess, how you see your activity score. You can see things like how many estimated steps you've taken, and you can see most days for me, like I only go to the gym once a week at the moment, right? But even on a low activity day, I'm still doing well over 10,000 steps, 24,000, 16,000. Um, and that's just because of the lifestyle that I have, I guess. And then down here, activity, you get the breakdown, um, training volume, frequency. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't really, like I said, I don't go too much into this. So um, yeah, that's your activity screen. I haven't logged any workouts in here. Finally, we have the explore screen. I haven't been into here before. Well, I've been into it. I haven't used it. So I don't know too much about it. So I'm not gonna talk about it. <laughs> I think it's just videos like meditation videos, guided meditation, guided breath work, helping you get to sleep. Finally, one thing I do wanna to touch on, the new Aura Ring 3 sells for $2.99. $3.99 if you get the stealth one. All it, it just looks different. There's no performance uh, changes. Now, Aura Ring, we're doing a promo um, if you, purchase the ring you'd get six month free membership I don't know if that's ended um, but after that you have to pay a few dollars a week a few dollars a month sorry I think it was like five dollars or something a month and that gives you access to a few more bells and whistles within the app now these bells and whistles are what was sort of taken for granted in the Aura Ring 2 such as seeing all that extra data that I just showed you on the screen seeing the breakdowns um, I also think the membership gives you access to that final explore option with the guided meditations and stuff, which is, you know, it's kind of cool, but I personally wouldn't be buying an O-ring for those reasons, for those features. Um, so it caused a lot of controversy because a lot of people are like, you know, why, do you, why are you charging a subscription for something that we already had? And hey, this is getting rather expensive because you pay three, 400 bucks for a ring and then an extra 100, 200 bucks every few years for, for access to that ring effectively. So I can see why a lot of people were quite sour about it. If you were upgrading from an Aura Ring 2 to a 3, there was a deal going for a while there where you could get the membership for free um, if you upgraded in time. I, I actually bought it my this ring under a new account and I saw the upgraded thing later on I was like damn it I gotta reach out to Aura Ring support and get that offer um, applied to my account but anyway um, it's kind of interesting though because I personally like having used Aura Ring for a long time I'd be gutted if all that stuff was taken away and I had to pay for it now of course I won't have to because I've been a member uh, a user of Aura Ring and can take advantage of that offer they gave me but if someone was new to Aura Ring. I don't know if I'd recommend someone going out and spending $2.99 for a ring and then having to pay extra to see data that we used to get anyway. Now, maybe there's something I'm missing. Maybe with that membership, you get even more features or more data. I don't know what though, right? Um, like I said, I don't I don't rate the guided meditation and guided sleep and all that stuff. I don't, I don't think that's worth your $5 a month, especially when you can go buy an app or something that has all these things built in. Um, but then I feel like having an aura ring without seeing your trends and your breakdowns and your daily like you know all the true data in there that you can that the aura ring is exceptionally good at at um, calculating and measuring. I feel like it's like you're not getting the true product. Like if you just buy the aura ring and you don't get the membership, it's like I don't know. It's like buying a Aston Martin and having all these speed limiters in it and you can't go into your top two gears. It's like why like you know what I mean it's like you're not getting the full performance from you if you have a second generation ring or a ring and you have a bit of money take advantage of the aura ring update upgrade deal get the new ring because you are getting that heart rate feature and um and you're probably getting a better senses and whatnot right but only do that if you got if you got good money right if you got money to burn I guess in a way if you don't have that money to burn and you have a second gen ring Hold on to it um, because the ring, like you, if I had my second one, second gen ring on my other finger, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. I, I mean, sure, you'd be able to tell it's been used, but it's not like the new one's smaller, thinner, you know, there's no aesthetic differences. In terms of performance, <clears throat> battery life seems to be the same. Um, yes, you get the heart rate feature, but it's not, it's not like a total game changer. Yeah, so that's like the upgrade point of view. Should you upgrade? I guess it depends on how much money you have. Now, if you don't have a second gen ring and you're wondering whether you should buy the third generation ring, again, it depends on money. If you've got plenty of money around uh, and you really want to buy this, sure, go spend your 300 bucks, get the Aura Ring and jump on the subscription membership 
program and yeah get all the bells and whistles and stuff and keep paying your hundred uh, your whatever it will be 60 70 bucks a year to access some of those features cool if you're tight on money like most people are here's what i'm going to suggest you do don't buy the aura ring three go onto craigslist ebay I don't know, your, your local Facebook groups or your biohacking Facebook groups and ask if anyone has a late model recently purchased Aura Ring 2. Try and buy it for, I don't know, $150, whatever, that's 50% of the price of a new one. Buy that ring and you won't have to worry about the membership model or the, or the ongoing subscription because with the Aura Ring 2, or as I said, you'll still get full functionality of the ring. You'll still get all the data, you'll still get all the graphs, all the insights, and you don't have to pay a subscription for it. Sure, the ring, the Aura Ring 2, isn't as good as the Aura Ring 3, but it's still pretty darn good. I mean, it's not like this new third gen ring is like totally revolutionary, amazingly awesome. You know, it's not like it's testing my heart rate every two seconds. I mean, if you look at the second generation ring and compare it to the third generation ring and know that there's been, what, two, maybe three? Was it even more? Four years in between, in between those models. In a way, you could almost feel like it's disappointing that the Aura Ring 3 hasn't improved that much. Now, I don't own an Apple Watch, but if you compared an Apple Watch today that was just released of one from four years ago, there, there would be a massive change in, in features and technology, you know, bells and whistles and better battery, better screens, higher resolution. Uh, you know, you got the ECG check tracking now. Like there's a big change, right? But you compare the Aura Ring 3 with the Aura Ring 2 over the same time span and it's like, not much has changed. You know, and that's why I feel like in a way, it, it, you could say that Aura Ring 3 is a disappointment, I guess. I guess that is a fair conclusion to come to. And that is the conclusion that I think I'm coming to. And that's why, if you don't have an Aura Ring 2 and you can't upgrade uh, with those special promos going around and you're looking to get into the Aura Ring space, I think you might be better off trying to get a secondhand Aura Ring 2 because it's going to be cheaper, maybe 150 bucks, 200 perhaps. Um, you are going to get access to all of the data without having to pay a subscription and you're still getting 80% of the performance, maybe more, 90% of the performance. I had the Aura Ring 2 for three, four years. It was great. It helped me learn more about my body, learn more about my sleep. You know, it told, I knew when to back off from training and, and when to push harder. Um, the Aura Ring 2 does everything that I wanted it to do. Uh, it helped me with all of those things. Yes, the Aura Ring, Aura Ring 3 is better. Is it worth the extra couple hundred bucks? You know, I don't know. What am I missing here, guys? Uh, you tell me. You tell me. Is there something totally exceptional about this ring that I don't know about. Um, am I unfair with my comments and conclusions here? Is the membership and subscription model, you know, justified? What are your thoughts? If you got one of these rings, please let me know and I'm keen to hear your thoughts. If you have an Aura Ring second generation and you are or aren't upgrading, I'm curious to know why. If you haven't bought an Aura Ring and you're waiting for the new Aura Ring 3 to get into the game, after learning about the new features, watching these videos and other reviews, what have you decided? Are you going to upgrade or are you not? I'm really curious to know. I'm going to leave it there. This has gone on way longer than I expected. I hope you've enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up if you have. Leave any questions, comments below and uh, be sure to subscribe because I'll be doing more videos like this in time. Alright guys, see you soon. Bye.